Hello and welcome to some more quality time on the edge. Uh, and I say quality time because it can only be quality time if you're looking at knives. And besides the fact we're looking at a little quality product. So we've got another guy from Wii here. Um, so this is the Wii Peer, P-E-E-R, <clears throat> frame lock design. Let's get that open and lay him down. So that sort of gentleman folder type uh, knife, so maybe a little bit longer than a typical gentleman's folder. Um, so this is a Ostap Hill design knife, um, and he's another Polish custom knife maker. I say another Polish custom knife maker because the uh, the guy whose name I always like to butcher, <laughs> Gregor Skrabarski, combo design, also a Polish knife designer. So some nice some nice work coming uh, from that nation. So let's go through some of the uh, materials on this knife, uh, the dimensions, and then give you my impression of this guy. So what we've got is a blade steel of CPM 20 CV. So uh, again, a, a knife that I uh, looked at um, very recently, the Wii Screech, also with that same um, blade steel, CPM 20 CV, not a blade steel I mentioned in that review that I've had a lot of exposure to. So it does look like uh, we are starting to transition to that, um, but we'll see uh, if that is the case as new knives come out. So from the research that I did on it, and I mentioned that in the other review, it seems like a very good blade steel, another crucible steel, um, that the experts uh, say is essentially the same in terms of characteristics as Bola M390. So, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the other review that edge retention on par with Elmex S90V and M390, corrosion resistance uh, similar to that of S35VN and M390, and then toughness on par with D2 Elmex M390. So, uh, all in all, it seems like uh, very good characteristics for that knife. Um, in terms of the rest of the materials on this guy, it, pretty much everything is uh, titanium. So, in terms of the hardware, the clip, uh, it's all titanium. Except that we've got this little over, overview, overlay on the handle. And that overlay is, uh, is um, and I wanted to say bronze, but it's not bronze, it's brass. There is a version, by the way, that has bronze, but this one has um, a brass overlay. Um, very attractive, the way they've done that. Uh, and then the pivot is, uh, is a cage ceramic ball bearing. Seems to be quite common uh, in inverted commas on Wii knives at the moment. Uh, those those sort of specifications, I mean. Dimensions of the knife, blade length, quite a long slender blade here. So from that point closest to the tip of the blade, 87.9 uh, mils, and that's 3.46 inches. Blade thickness, quite a slender blade. We have a 3 mil uh, thickness, that's 0.12 inches. And then uh, handle thickness is 12 millimeters, 0.47 inches. Close length or handle length, if you want, uh, that is 113.8 millimeters, uh, and that's 4.48 inches. And then your overall length for the knife is 201.7 millimeters, that's 7.94 inches. And let's just check weight for this guy, and then we'll speak a little bit about the design and what I think. Get ye reflecting black hole. Reflecting black hole is a contradiction in terms. Uh, scale on there. Crank him up. And we're on ounces, so let's see what we get on ounces. Not light, and I think that's because of the overlays uh, of brass that add that weight to him. Uh, so 3.8 ounces, yeah, uh, heavier than you'd anticipate for a knife so slender. And that is 108 milliliters if you want to drink him. Uh, <laughs> that'll be the same in grams. There we go, 108 grams, there we go. So yeah, for, for the size of the knife, not, not that light, but again, I, I suspect that that is the, uh, those brass overlays on it. Quite a sort of thickish piece of brass put on there. Get him open and have a look at this. So we've got a spear point blade, a very stabby blade with a quite a 
big false edge on the back there. It almost gives that sort of dagger look to the to the blade. Uh, quite a, attractive. No ricasso to speak of. A uh, very little one hidden in the back there. Um, and then a nice sharpening tool. Quite interesting the way the, that, uh, that uh, what was his name? Ostap has designed the blade. You've got the sharpening choil on that side and you've got this little nick at the back uh, that creates uh, almost symmetry on the knife. Uh, no real reason for it to be in back there, but it, it does give a quite an attractive look to it. A nice little touch. Uh, and while I'm, while I'm there at that little nick, we've got the jimping on the back. So if you get a uh, hold of the knife, you've got a little bit of purchase for your thumb. And then the flipper tab creates that finger protection on the other side, also with the jimping, you know, for the flipper tab. It's definitely not a finger choil, unless you like uh, mutilating yourself. Let's not go down that road. And then we've got his name on there. So I don't know if that's, if he just uses his name as the design, but we've got the Ostap Hill design etched onto the blade tidy blade finish we've got a, a stone wash gray on there and again as we does a very very neatly done edge on that blade um, and nice and sharp out of the box and a very very thin tip on that uh, so uh, we spoke about the thickness of that blade that wasn't you know the thickest blade but it tapers off uh, even further to the tip, um, so we really do have a very thin, very stabby knife here. Uh, Mould's uh, pocket clip. Now, they describe, we, that is, describe this as a tip-up. Well, that's obviously, it is a tip-up, but they say that this is right only. And having a look at this, I'm. it looks to me like this could be reversible. Because you've got this milled out area on this overlay. And it looks to be, now I haven't taken this knife apart. I don't own the knife. But it looks to me like that milled out area behind the pocket clip on that side is the same. So while they say right hand only, to me it looks like you could remove that cap and flip that pocket clip around to the other side. Um, and then that cap would just sit on the opposite side. So anyway, that's... That's what it looks like to me. Uh, um, so I, I think that this is probably a reversible clip. But um, don't hold me to it if it, if it isn't. Um, I'll see if I can get another one and, uh, and maybe actually just try that out. But like I say, they say right hand only. I think it's reversible. I, I, it really does look like this could be reversible um, to me. Uh, what else do I need to say about the blade? So uh, the, the the knife, I should say. So the, the, the finish overall, uh, uh, excluding the overlay, is all grey stone washed. And then they describe this, this uh, brass overlay as black hand rubbed brass. And yeah, I can see that. It is incredibly tidy. It's a very, very tight, a very neat looking design. That, you know, if you look at that, it's... Uh, it's just, it's just, well, that's the best way to describe it. Tidy, neat design. Minimalistic, uh, minimalist design. I like the way that, uh, you know, so you've always got that material that's removed on the frame to help with the flex for the lock. But the way this is done, it's sort of a very discreet and unusual way of doing that. So quite narrow little mold areas that are are, are rounded. So when you first look at it, it just looks like a design element. And then you realize... Oh, that's the area where they've taken the material off to allow for the flex. Now, you probably didn't need to take that much material off because the lock is is probably in both dimensions, you know, from that dimension is, is probably quite narrow and, and it's thin from that direction. So you probably didn't have to take off that much. It's just a little bit of relief needed there. But uh, anyway, a very nice uh, design element. And then around where you disengage the lock, we've got the, the little cutaway uh, wow, I keep moving off the camera. Little cutaway, a little bit more taken off this side, so your thumb can get to that takeaway, and then there's that cutaway, and then those little diagonal lines over there. So that also neatly done. 
and then we've got so you might just be able to catch it and inside we've got the stainless steel insert but again very discreetly done so you don't see it here but you can see it if you look inside there um, and then no it doesn't I don't really know maybe I should get a torch in there if it's got an over travel stop in there yeah it does it does look like it does so I'm showing myself here but <laughs> do you want to have a look as well uh, <laughs> see if I can uh, get in there. It might have a little over travel stop extension on that stainless steel insert. Really difficult to show because it's so small in there. Maybe if I open the blade slightly, create a bit of more space in there. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it does. It looks like it does have the over travel stop in there. Wow, being awkward, yeah. But um, I was just about to say, you might not actually need it because if you open it, if you open the, the lock, because you've got this, um, this overlay, you can see that the lock actually opens up. Wow, let's just get that back on camera. <laughs> I keep showing myself. Um, you can see that when you unlock it, the lock moves up against the overlay. So you probably don't need um, the over the over travel stop on there because of that overlay but anyway it looks like there is one regardless and uh, so how many minutes have I now spent trying to awkwardly show you that I don't know <laughs> so, uh, let's have a look so this is again one of those designs uh, where the um, pin stop is the stop pin uh, I'll get it right one day. The stop pin is mounted to the blade, so it runs through the blade over there. So there's undoubtedly, the tolerances are so tight in there, the gaps are so small, you can't really see, but that, uh, that stop pin obviously must be running in a little channel on the inside there, and you know, that creates your lockup. But um, really difficult to see inside there, but that must be how it, uh, how it works. Action on this guy is phenomenally good. Now I, I uh, was looking at the uh, the Wii Screech, um, and that review will probably go up before this one. And that one's action was okay, uh, both on ceramic ball bearings. But this one is just—it's one of those. Uh, there's only one way to deploy it, and that's with the flipper tab. But it's one of those where it is so smooth. <laughs> It's intoxicating and it's got that nice sound so again let me let me shut up and let you listen to that that is really exceptionally smooth you know every now and again you get a knife in your hand where the action on the knife is just it's so good that you just can't stop playing with it and this is one of those knives um, so, I, you know, a nice knife for sort of suit wearing might be a little bit long. You might get uh, people running for the exits if you pull this out. Uh, but uh, it certainly would go with the sort of stylish, stylish look. And, and that's what this is. It's an incredibly stylish design knife. Now, it comes as a couple of, uh, a couple of options as well. So you get one that is a lot more uh, sort of first responderish in its uh, um, color um, sort of... Uh, um, <sighs> its coloration uh, and that one is you have a instead of this uh, this my word this brass overlay you get it in a orange g10 and that's got either a gray stone washed blade or a black stone washed blade and then you get one that has a shredded carbon fiber overlay and that's got the uh, gray or black um, stone washed blade and then you get one with a copper overlay with just a black stone washed blade. So in terms of the copper or brass, the brass one has the gray and then the copper one has the black blade. So there you go. Wow, that was painful. Um, I've held the G10 and the carbon fiber versions of this knife and they are quite a bit lighter. And I haven't uh, weighed them, but they are quite a bit light, lighter. So on the copper version and on the brass version, those overlays do add quite a little bit of uh, weight to the, to the blades. Right, I think I've covered just about everything on this very, very neat, very good looking knife. This is another one of those that is tempting me just because it's slightly different. Uh, you know, it's uh, got a slightly different shape and these, 
these beautiful sort of symmetric lines uh, just there's something about this knife that is incredibly attractive and that little nick that I mentioned in the back you know in the back there earlier on to create that symmetry in the blade is is really it's it's beautifully beautifully done beautifully designed very very nice um, so uh, I got to once again thank the guys at Blades and Triggers in South Africa for supplying this knife to me to provide to providing it to me to do this review so um, Bowen I've mentioned before is at the Eastgate branches away at the moment but uh, I've uh, really been helped out by Muzo who's taken over his place and and uh, JC as well there the guys have been very thankful and very uh, very thankful they've been very I've been very thankful they've been very helpful and supportive um, uh, so price-wise at uh, Blades and Triggers in South Africa, Rand price is 5205 for this version with the uh, brass. And then the G10 version is uh, 5105 so a little bit a little bit less. But I've mentioned, go negotiate with the guys. They're open to chatting and they're, opening to, they're open to doing a good deal um, with you. And then uh, people that are interested in the dollar price, I've seen this guy at uh, Blade HQ. And uh, because of the various uh, versions of the knife, so sort of that 223 to 225 dollar region um, for this guy. Size comparisons. Uh, let's pull up a few of the guys I've been using. Uh, the Benchmade Mini Barrage. Give you a sense of that. Uh, the other one that I still got on my desk here is the Spyderco Lil Subilt. Give you a sense of that. Obviously, a much chunkier uh, knife, a little sub hilt, and um, and then a knife that's uh, a, probably more similar in terms of its overall purpose is this knife that I still haven't done a review to and am intending on doing it. Um, another really nice fidget toy, and this is the Kaiser Apis. Uh, but that would be a more similar um, knife in terms of purpose. Thinner. This, this, this. I mean, this knife is, uh, you know, quite a quite a long knife. Yeah, I spoke about that. Uh, you know, that 201.7 millimeters, 7.94 inches. He's a he's a he's a long boy, but um, but you know th that similar gentleman folder, slender style to him. And I think that that is again just about it. I think that's all that I've got for you. Uh, another one of those knives I'm sure you can pick up that's impressed me. I really like the design, a little bit unusual, and that that um, really kind of clean look and design about the knife is uh, is is gorgeous. And this and this finish on this overlay is really nice. <laughs> of course, that action can't stop speaking about the action on this knife. Ah, oh, magic! Absolutely magic. There it is, guys. That's all I have for you today. I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, and please do subscribe. Uh, and if you subscribe, please hit that bell icon. But um, I'd really like you to enjoy me. Uh, to enjoy me. <laughs> no, don't. I don't want you to enjoy me. I want you to join me, however. So I really would like you to join me more often. You go well and God bless.